set the conditions for our feature, the 121st Kentucky Oaks. It is grade one for three-year-old fillies going a mile and eight, $300,000 added in the purse. First place check, over $235,000. And joining me now, Tom Duncan himself, a man who appreciates history, tradition, and Phillies, and a little perspective on this race, Tom, that started back here in 1875. Yeah, the roster of winners of this race reads like the Hall of Fame for three-year-old Phillies, but nonetheless, every year, it is run in the reflected glory of the Kentucky Derby. For instance, this year, ask anyone to name a three-year-old Philly. They will name... Serena Song because she's running in the Kentucky Derby and there was a lot of speculation that she would run in this race today. Well, Wayne Lucas was the main the man that made the decision to run the Philly in the Derby. She brings a lot of speculation. Uh, should she run? Shouldn't she run? Can she beat the Colts? Can she stay a mile and a quarter? And she brings a lot of charisma. She has a lot of charisma. She's coming off a real good string of rolls on a, and, and wins and so forth. And, and yet she's got a toughness about her that you like to see. I said the other day she was like she had uh, was born to a family of 12 and the other 11 were boys. She knows how to handle herself in a tough crowd. So Serena Song will not run in the Oaks, but Urbane will. And in the opinion of many, myself included, at the nine furlong distance of today's Oaks, Urbane would have been the winner. But it is not to be against Serena Song today. It will be against a field of others. And let's meet them. The improving Nascra Colors breaks from post position number one. Forested, who was good in Central America, but today she's on Central Avenue in Louisville. It's a lot tougher neighborhood here. Gal in a ruckus, an ambitious entry. Urbane, if she loses, call the sheriff. A crime has been committed. Sneaky quiet, she's fun to watch, comes from way out of it. Post it, beaten fair, square, and decisively by Urbane in the Ashland Stakes. Scratch paper, good record against soft competition. And the cat appeal, the mandatory grade one entrant from the uh, ubiquitous Wayne Lucas. Well, Tom, uh, you mentioned, of course, that uh, Serena Sogg pretty much had Urbane's number, and only three losses Urbane suffered. But when she came to Kentucky and went to the Ashland, she really stepped out. Stepped out uh, literally uh, in front with no Serena's song. Urbane went immediately to the lead, and she showed a new dimension in the Ashland Stakes, going wire to wire, running all the way on the lead. At nine furlongs, that might be the best Philly, three-year-old Philly in America today. Well, we're glad you've joined us, part of the record crowd on Kentucky Oaks Day here at Churchill Downs in Louisville, Kentucky. Celebrities abound here in the Kentucky Derby weekend. The lovely Bo Derrick uh, greeting a friend. Well, I wish that was my nose. And there's Janine Turner of Northern Exposures. Uh, the ladies here enjoying the derby here. And we mentioned the crowd. It is an all-time record for Oaks Day. Look at that throng. More than 87,000. Biggest crowd ever in the 121 runnings. They're here well, certainly because the weather is just beautiful this afternoon. After some rain earlier in the week, temperature approaching 70 degrees. Partly sunny. The wind, 5 to 10 miles per hour. And a fast racetrack. Let's call on the other part of our group now. Bob Newmeyer. He's down in the paddock. Bob? From Bo Derrick and Janine to Bob Neumeyer, from the sublime to the ridiculous. Well, Chris mentioned 87,000 fans here on a beautiful day at Churchill Downs, and I know that many of them have spent at least part of this day trying to handicap this jigsaw puzzle known as the Kentucky Derby. This is a smorgasbord, folks. 19 delectables in all, something for everyone, a filly against the boys, an international flavor, horses from England, horses from Japan. What we don't have is an undefeated horse. And that's the reason why there are 19 entered in the run for the roses. Let's take a quick look at the field. This is not in post position order. Keep that in mind. We begin with the long shot entry of Pyramid Peak, who won uh, a big one at Hialeah, the Flamingo, and his entry mate, Jambalaya Jazz. The likely betting favorite will be the powerful D. Wayne Lucas entry of the Philly Serena's song, a front runner extraordinaire in Timber Country, who will run from off the pace. He, of course, won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile at this very racetrack back in November. Number three, Dazzling Falls, won the Remington Park Derby and the Arkansas Derby. Wild Sin won the Bluegrass at Keeneland not too long ago. Suave Prospect is trained by Nick Zito. He's won two derbies with Strike the Gold and Go for Gin. Eltish, fascinating horse in from England. Remember him? Second last year to Timber Country in the Juvenile. Jumron is a fast closer. He was third in the Santa Anita Derby. He's taking a lot of support here at Churchill Downs this week. Co-choice, perhaps, with the Lucas Entry, Talking Man with Mike Smith. Very impressive at Aqueduct. He was the Canadian Juvenile Champion. 
then there's afternoon delights as close to an unbeaten horse as we have in the derby he's only lost once that was by a head that was in the santa anita derby you like closers how about tihana run with jerry bailey number 11 is thunder gulch also trained by wayne lucas gary stevens in to ride thunder gulch and then half a dozen in the field nakadoon lake george in character ski captain he's in from japan meki and Sitadid, who's in from england smorgasbord of horses good luck with your handicapping don't forget a favorite has not won this race since spectacular bid 15 years ago that's the field for the 121st kentucky derby chris a lot of selections still to be made bob what a great field it is 19 set to go to the post tomorrow and post time at 5 32 eastern time tomorrow for the 121st kentucky derby let's go to some of the earlier stakes action here on our card the louisville budweiser breeders cup two hundred thousand dollars a mile and a 16th and it really turned out to be a two horse race pretty much right from the start fit to lead and jade flesh we're doing battle in this three and up race at a mile and a 16th let's pick up tom durkin's call a half and 46 and four and the cadence has quickened Farther back in the field, Red Star running third on the outside. Wendy is fourth. And then Briar Road, fifth. Toward the inside, Blushing Maggie running in sixth. She's about seven lengths from the lead. And cut the charm now. Launches her bid from the back of the pack. She's beginning to roll and launches a strong bid with three furlongs to go here. Now Julie Crone making a move with Jade Flush right to the neck of Fit to lead. Fit the lead, so fending her off. Jade Flush right there. Wendy drawing into contention. Cut the charm. Continues a prolonged and sustained bid on the far outside. Briar Road is coming at the inside. She's running in fifth. They're coming down to the last furlong, and the whip is out on Jade Flush, who is roused to a short lead, but fit to lead, comes roaring back on the inside, and those two, neither giving an inch as they come down to the last hundred yards, and fit to lead comes roaring back to reclaim the lead. Jade Flush, second best, fit to lead. Going on to win it here, a determined winner it was, losing the lead just inside the eighth ball. Jade Flush got in front, but fit to lead came back to win. Fifth to lead, winning the $200,000 Louisville Budweiser Breeders Cup. Artie Hubbard and Connie Sesney, two of the three owners, were on hand in the winner's circle at Churchill Downs. Well, where was the third owner, Jim Colbert? He was at the office. Working, standing over a putt almost simultaneously as Fit to Lead cross the wire. Jim lines up this putt on ESPN's coverage of the Payne Weber Senior Golf, and he drops it. Not a bad afternoon for that trio of owners. Let's take a look at the results in Louisville. Budweiser Breeders' Cup, Fit to Lead, who, by the way, is in full. It just won her second straight stakes race in Kentucky. 720, 420, 360. Jade Flush, 363. And two and out at 840. We'll have a closer look at our fillies, the leading ladies, the Kentucky Oaks, when we return to Churchill Downs. And the ladies are lovely this afternoon. Derby, it's the Kentucky Oaks, the three-year-old fillies in the spotlight. And certainly, ladies have stolen the spotlight all during the week here at Churchill Downs. But, of course, the big story being the D. Wayne Lucas train Serena's song, passing on the Oaks today and going on to the Kentucky Derby. Seems like everybody's a fan of Serena's song, even the trainer of the Oaks favorite, Urbane Brian Mayberry. We found him the Serena's song hat on. Yeah, what a very good friend of mine trains Serena's song, as you know, and uh, he buys all sorts of hats and stuff. I might have to buy him a couple suits, but I shop at a different place than he does. He <laughs> Starting at the end of last year in the Hollywood Starlet, when Serena's song beat Urbane by a nose, the two Phillies have gone head to head three times, including this battle to the wire in the Grade One Santa Anita Oaks. Urbane never beat Serena's song. You can imagine how Mayberry felt when Lucas decided to pass on the Oaks, the runner in the Kentucky Derby. Well, I'm certainly not upset that she wanted to be lying if I said that I was, uh, but I, it would have been nice for, for racing and racing fans to have those two run, run against one another again because it really is a very interesting competition between the two. But... Uh, as sporting as I am, I'm not upset that he's <laughs> done a runner against the boys. Owned by the Siegel family of California and ridden by Hall of Famer Eddie Delahousse, Urbane came to Kentucky to prove herself in Keeneland's Grade 1 Ashland Stakes. He opted to put her on the lead and he put her on an easy lead, made a slow pace and, and they kind of ganged her from the 3 8 pole, and he just kind of shook his stick at her and she won very, very easily. Mayberry won the Oaks last year with the brilliant Sardula. He sees some of those same qualities in Urbane. 
This filly is uh, cut from the same kind of mold, very, very competitive, uh, kind of an aloofness that I think uh, she's similar to Sardula. Sardula was a bigger, stronger filly and may have had uh, more innate talent. She was a remarkable athlete. The veteran Mayberry may still be a little confused about which hat to wear, but he's certain about his love for the Phillies. I don't think the Phillies get enough credit in this country, though. Uh, it's always a cold, cold, you know, male chauvinistic society. But... <laughs> Not Brian <right>, Mayberry. <laughs> no, no, I like the girls. And he certainly likes this lady. This is Urbane, his three-year-old filly that right now the crowd at Churchill Downs loves. She is currently at one to five. It was 1989 and 1990 that Dwayne Lucas won this Oaks back-to-back. -back. Brian Mayberry will try to become the sixth trainer to accomplish that to Oaks double here this afternoon. Bob Newmeyer takes a look back at last year's victory by the Mayberry team. I think it's fair to say that Brian Mayberry would just love to have history repeat itself. Yes, he is saddling Urbane up on the board at 1-5 to five in this year's Kentucky Oaks. But last year, he saddled Sardula, who was the second choice, to the favorite Lakeway. It turned out to be one of the best races of 1994. California stars traveled to a cold and wet Churchill Downs last year for their first ever meeting. The undefeated two-time grade one winner Lakeway was slightly favored over Sardula, who had beaten every horse she had ever faced with the exception of champion Philly Phone Chatter. But as the field hit the final turn in the Oaks, both stars had work to do. They're a half mile from the line here, flying in the lane and slide shower still 1-2. Seven lengths back to Sardula, Lakeways right alongside her. And another three fair, Chris is dropping out of it. Diane Sala beginning to launch her bid now. She's ten lengths from the lead. Slow Kitty Slow is the trailer. They're rounding the far turn. They've run three quarters and one, 11 and four. Lakeway with a powerful run to the lead on the outside. And here comes Lakeway sweeping past the weakening front runners. Sardula's coming through on the inside and the confrontation at the top of the stretch and Diane's halo is moving into contention coming down toward the final furlong Sardula Lakeway head to head as they charge headlong into the last furlong Diane's halo is third Sardula digging down deep Lakeway is tenacious on the outside Sardula Lakeway in a battle of will to the wire here's the finish it looks like Sardula gets it by a desperate head it was indeed Sardulu with jockey Eddie Della Husse in the most dramatic victory of her all too brief racing career. Her short life ended in February due to a degenerative bone disease. But for a time, Sardula was the queen of her class. There's Jamie Lucas with a handshake from Brian Mayberry, Wayne's son, Jeff, just off to Wayne's right there as the two California-based horsemen have a few uh, words with each other. And I'm sure Brian's thinking about trying to get one of those doubles as Wayne Lucas had towards the end of the 80s here in the Kentucky Oaks. So many uh, traditions here at Churchill Downs, old ones, even some new ones that have started this week. And for more on that, we talked to the president of Churchill Downs, Tom Meeker, and asked him first about his race today at the Kentucky Oaks. Great race. Uh, Urbane's here, and the other filly is going for bigger things in the uh, in the Derby tomorrow. So many great traditions. A brand new one started this year. Well, we uh, inaugurated our first sale. We had that the other night at the Sports Spectrum, which is one of our facilities here in Louisville. And uh, the reason we did it is we, we have all of these people coming to town to enjoy racing. And what better way to enjoy racing than owning one? And so uh, we opened up the sale, horses and training sale, and went quite well. And the outlook for the big day tomorrow? It's going to be big. The weather is perfect. Uh, we've got a great field, 19 horses. Uh, some would argue that uh, horses should be positioned in a different spot here and there, but by and large, uh, everyone's happy. Uh, it's going to be a great race day, and the weather's going to be superb. Internationally renowned artist Leroy Neiman, whose paintings are on display here at Churchill Downs in the Kentucky Dairy Museum. Doing a little work in the paddock. We'll be back with another stakes race for you on Oaks Day. To upset Urbane here in the Kentucky Oaks. And Mike, you're a, you're a come from behind horse uh, with a one sustained late run. What are you hoping uh, happens to Urbane up front to give you a shot to steal this thing today? Well, hopefully they go kind of fast. I mean, uh, normally whenever a, a horse is pressed on, on the front end, uh, the first part of the race, they'll come back to you a bit, and that's what we're kind of hoping for. You rode her at uh, Tampa Bay, and we're looking at that race now, and this is, I guess, a classic uh, three-wide sweep off the pace. 
Yeah, she ran a great race that day. She actually went easier than, than what it than what it looked like. Uh, the, the last sixteenth of a mile, I kind of let her gear down again. She had the race under control, and, and uh, there was no there was no need to to, to push her anymore. She already had the race won, uh, but she could have won by farther. Considerably softer opposition, we would agree. Certainly is. Uh, if her brain runs the race, she's going to be very tough to beat. But if anybody can beat her, I think we have a good chance. Uh, she trains over the track great, and that's certainly going to help us. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about Talking Man tomorrow in the Derby. He's one of the choices. Interesting scenario. You won at Aqueduct off the pace. You won on the lead. You going to try to take the lead from Serena's song and try to break her right from the get-go? I'm going to let Talking Man uh, do the talking and, and, and do the walking. I'm going to let him kind of put me where he wants to be. As long as he's there comfortable, it's a, it's a long run race. Uh, a lot of time, uh, just, you just kind of got to be patient. And if he handles the track and runs his race and I ride mine, uh, if we're good enough, maybe we'll be there. Good luck. Thank you. All right, Mike Smith trying to uh, make up for the disappointment tomorrow in, uh, with Holy Bull from, of course, last season. Chris? Back with Tom Dirk and the Crown Royal American Turf was run earlier today here uh, under the Twin Spires, by the way, celebrating their 100th birthday here in 1995. And Tom, with all the great history tradition here, turf racing uh, isn't among those. Uh, no, for the first 113 years at Churchill Downs, they didn't have any turf races. In 1987, they ran their first turf race, an important addition to Churchill Downs because it allowed Churchill Downs to host the Breeders' Cup, which they've done several times since then. Well, let's take a look now at the conditions of that race run earlier this afternoon. It is the Crown Royal Royal American Turf, $100,000 added. Three-year-olds going a mile and a sixteenth on the Matt Wynn Turf course. And Tom Durkin's going to preview some of the favorites of that race for you. Well, uh, among them is Native Regent, uh, who should provide some of the early pace today. A horse that has won $365,000. That's three times the earnings of any other horse in the race. Last uh, uh, time out, he was a beaten favorite, but, but prior to that, uh, he won the Everglades. There's Dixie Dynasty, just won the forerunner on the grass at Keeneland. Mike Smith up. Uh, he won this race last year with Jaggery John, and of course, he'll ride Talking Man tomorrow. He won the forerunner, forcing to go five wide. Saving ground on the turf is uh, very key. And uh, there is Admiralty in those uh, AP silks of uh, Alan Paulson, trained by Bill Mott, ridden by Jerry Bell the people that uh, bring the number one horse in America to you, Cigar. And Admiralty making his long-awaited first race uh, on the turf. He's got a turf pedigree. And we're ready for the call now, early this afternoon, with Tom Durkin of the Crown Royal American Turf. Go ahead, Tom. Last horses moving in here, instant panic, taking a spot in the middle of the gate and way on the far outside, Admiralty moving in. And we're ready for the start. And they're off. And uh, instant panic comes out. Bat them baby blues is there. So is Nostra. Down toward the inside, Hollywood Flash. And up from in between horses now comes Native Regent. And on the far outside, here comes Assurance. No one was really anxious for the lead. So Pat Day takes charge with Assurance. Now in front by length as they move into the first turn. Native Regent is second. Hollywood Flash down inside running in third. A crush of horses in behind the front runners. Nostra's right there running in fourth. Sonic Signal taken four wide into the turn. Now racing in fifth position. And then toward the inside, it's Instant Panic running in sixth. Admiralty was five wide going into the turn. Is now back running in seventh. Followed by Dixie Dynasty, who's showing no speed today. And at the back of the pack, back them baby blues. You're the one. Unanimous vote. And far behind the rest is straight to Keelan Knight. The fractions are on a style. The first quarter, 23 and one the half in 46 and two fifth seconds. The field moving into the far turn. Native Regent is the leader. The leader now by a head assurance is running second. Nostra revving up on the outside. Hollywood Clash is now making a move, and those four in a battle for the lead as they round the far turn. Five lengths back to Sonic Signal, who's now running in fifth. On the far outside, Dixie Dynasty rallying from sixth as the field turns for home. Nostra fan four wide into the stretch and coming hard. Down toward the inside, Native Region battling on gamely. Hollywood Clash unanimous look now. Gobbling up the grass on the far outside. They're in the final furlong. Here comes unanimous vote, who now blows on by Nostra and blows by Native Region 2. Then by the back, it's Dixie Dynasty, and under the line, unanimous vote wins it by a length and a half. Nostra finished second. It's close for third between Native Region and Dixie Dynasty. The green and yellow colors of owner Robert Savinsky, trainer young Tom Amos, with unanimous vote, written by Gary Stevens, a nice payoffs of 1640, 745-20, Nostra at 443-20, Native Region 460, the exact 7860, the Wittenauer winning time 142 for the running here of the Crown Royal American Turf.
We'll be back with more of our Oaks Day coverage in just 100th anniversary. Down to the paddock now and Bob Newmeyer. Well, the man who made the big decision of the week here at Churchill Downs regarding Serena's song is D. Wayne Lucas, who has an entry in this race, I might add, in Caterpillar. Any second thoughts, any regrets, uh, any uh, Monday morning quarterbacking about not being here in the Oaks and being in the Derby tomorrow? Well, if you want me to win this one, I should have the other filly, probably. But I, this is a good filly. She's okay. Uh, Urbane's supposed to win this race, Bob, if handicapping is going to stand up. But you know the funny thing about these horses, they still have to go around there and do it. You won the Derby with winning colors. Compare Serena's song to that wonderful gray that you won with a few years ago. They're not really a good comparison, and the winning colors was a big, long, striding filly, although she had good tactical speed. Uh, Serena's song's a little bit more like Lady Secret. She's a, she's a ballerina with an alley fighter's attitude. She's got that turn of foot. She'll get into the race, probably dictate a lot of the pace, but she's double tough. She's a real hickory tough filly. Good luck, Wayne. Thank you. All right, Wayne Lucas. On hand in the paddock on a beautiful day here at Churchill Downs as the Phillies take to the track for the Kentucky Oaks. Here come the ladies, Bob. $361,600, the gross purse for the 121st Kentucky Oaks. 235 to the winner. Let's take a look at our post-parade NASCAR colors. $60,000 Keeneland purchase, fifth in the Fairgrounds Oaks. Just one an allowance race at Keeneland. Aaron Grider, top young rider, has the assignment. The two-horse and $8,500 Keeneland purchase in the colors of Robert Perez. This is Forrest. It started her racing career in Panama, made U.S. debut at the end of March, ran fourth at Aqueduct. The rider, Jerry Bailey, just inducted into Racing's Hall of Fame on the 1993 Oaks, here with a uh, fine horse dispute. The three is Gal in a ruckus, $90,000 Keeneland purchase. She was closing, uh, coming off a six and a half furlong allowance win at Keeneland. That's her only start this year, the rider, Herb McCullough. The four horse here is the favorite now, and what a favorite. A two to five is her bane. Boy, she looks the part winner of the grade one Ashland Stakes in Keeneland. Eddie Dallahose, Hall of Famer, two-time winner of this race. The five horses, sneaky quiet. The famed colors of Lanes in Farm of Will Farish, $140,000 Keeneland purchase. She won the Florida Oaks at Tampa, an allowance winner at Gulfstream. Mike Smith, two-time Eclipse Award winner you met earlier in the Irons. The six is posted, the only other graded stakes winner in this field besides her Bain. She won the grain grade two Alcibiades at Keeneland last fall, was six in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Sam Maples will be the rider. The seven horses scratch paper. She's the pride of Alabama. She's won five of eight starts, including an 11 and a half length drop in the Alabama Oaks. Timothy Fortineau is the jockey this afternoon. And rounding out our field, Dwayne Lucas trained over a Brook Farm owned Cat Appeal, the daughter of Storm Cat. $115,000 Keeneland purchase. Won the Dixie Bell in January at Oaklawn in her last start. The grade two Beaumont, she was seventh at Keeneland, has not won in three attempts past a mile. The rider, Pat Day, Hall of Famer. He won the 1988 Oaks on Goodbye Halo. Well, the crowd here, we mentioned before, a record crowd of more than 87,000, and they're all, of course, looking towards Urbane. She is the very strong favorite right now, the four-horse Urbane at 2-5. to five. Let's take a look at all the odds in this field of eight for the 121st Oaks, presented by Auto Tote. Nascar Colors, Forested, and Gallon Ruckus are all big, big prices. Urbane, there you see the favorite at 2-5. to five. Sneaky Quiet at 6, Posted 11, Scratch Paper 35, and Cat Appeal at 6. Well, it's obvious who the favorite is Urbane. Of course, we're looking for some value. Budweiser long shot selections, but today we have a dispute. Well, the way we settle conflicts on this program with Bob Newmeyer and Tom Durkin as we make him go nose to nose. Well, Mr. Durkin, with Urbane up on the board at such a short price, it is our charge to come up with a live Budweiser long shot for the Oaks. Tough task. Who do you like? Forested. I'm excited about this pick today. This is a South American filly who came up and ran an aqueduct, a sneaky fourth, a trouble trip in the Cicada Stakes. Today she gets the services of Hall of Fame rider Jerry Bailey. I love Forested today in this race. You need counseling. Counseling? You need to see a doctor. A that doctor? Morning, he couldn't beat Chris Lincoln going up a hill. Post it, my friend. Post it as Post a horse. It? You go with the most logical horse, not based on any uh, psychosis of yours. And a logical horse is posted, beaten four lengths by Urbane, who will be much the best. But if Urbane stumbles... But Tom, I had a vision. I, I, I was listening to the girl from Ipanema, and I saw this filly on the racetrack the other morning, all dressed up with a beautiful blanket and a nice little Easter bonnet and those red and yellow blinkers. And I said, wow, that's the South American filly that's going to upset 
Urbane and win the Kentucky Oaks today. Yeah, good reason to pick a horse because of her hat. Why not? I'll tell you what. If Post-it wins, I'll buy a cup of good old-fashioned Kentucky Burgoo stew. How about that? If Forrest wins, I'll buy you a free session at a psychiatrist. See you on the couch. <laughs> Well, they're both long shots. There's the two Forrest on the board. She is now 25 to 1. And saving fine to Mr. Durkins. There's Post It, the six horse, and Post It right now is 11 to 1. 25 to 1, 11 to 1. Our Bud Long Shot picks. The gate crew is standing by. It's a mile and a leaf. History in the Kentucky Oaks. Back stretch here at Churchill Downs. Among the long prices in this field, in fact, the longest price is the seven horse scratch paper. Scratch paper right now is at 40 to 1. Earlier we visited with his her trainer, Randy Nunley, and uh, kind of got an update of uh, where this filly has been running this spring. Well, we've run her mostly at Turfway and avoided some of the better fillies at this point, trying to see exactly what caliber she was. And she has done everything we've asked of her, so we felt she deserved a shot to step up a notch and try a better race. Another horse at a price is Nascar Colors. This filly, the, the one right now is currently 20 to 1. Probably the support mostly comes from, well, Tony Ryan, the local uh, trainer, uh, went to Trinity High here in Louisville, Kentucky. Got a lot of local support cheering him on. We asked him, though, why he decided to run Nascar Colors in today's Grade 1 Oaks. Probably it's the deletions of Cat's Cradle and Serena Song. It kind of opened the Oaks up to a wide open affair with Urbane probably being everybody's choice. I've really never been in a position where a grade one come up with one solid, solid horse and the rest of the field were pretty well matched and I felt like we deserved a chance in there. Uh, and Mr. Levinch is from Louisville here and uh, he wanted to have a horse in the Oaks, so here we are. Tony Ryan Shuttle, young trainer of NASCAR Colors at 20 to 1. Here are all the odds. Forrest at 25. Gal and Aruckus at 30. Urbane is now 1 to 5. Sneaky Quiet at 6. Post at 12. Scratch Paper 40. And Caterpillar at 7 to 1. Bob? I'm going to stick to my guns and tell you that I still believe Forrest is a very live long shot at 25 to 1. But it will be interesting to see where Eddie Delahousse places the favorite. There is sprinter's speed in this race. Gal and Aruckus, number 3. Caterpillar, number 8. So let's watch Delahousse to see where he places Urbane. She likes to run towards the pace. So uh, watch Eddie breaking from number four in the 121st Kentucky Oaks. Again, Brian Mayberry and Eddie Delahousse, who won last year with Sardula, will try for the double. And now, ready for the call, Tom Durkin. Hill going in. She uh, could be a pace factor there. You see Urbane in the background going in. In the warm-up, Urbane was really nervous. She was jumping up and down and nipping at the uh, at the pony all the way around. Very fractious in the uh, uh, time before the race. They're in the gate and they are off. And the gal in a ruckus comes out running for the lead. Delahousse gathers back the big favorite Urbane. But here comes Pat Day with Caterpillar on the outside. Posted is in between horses. Under the line now for the first time. Gal in a ruckus with the lead. Herb McCauley trying to throttle her speed down. Caterpillar right there prompting wild three wide as Gal in a ruckus goes a bit wide. Forsted slips on through. Comes up the inside. And Urbane is in and among horses now. Advancing into fourth position. Posted right up there with the first flight in fifth. Scratch paper along with Nascar Colors is down inside and another five or six lengths back to stretch running sneaky quiet the first quarter went in a tip at 23 and three fifth seconds a long shot force that has a short lead pressed by gal and a ruckus who's right there and her bane is in behind them she's still a little keyed up right there running anxiously in third catapult to her outside nascar colors is moving readily at the inside while in fifth position they run a half in 47 and two fifth seconds the field moving into the fire turn her bane is in between horses now gal and a ruckus to her outside forced it to her inside. Those three scrimmaging for the lead, and Urbane had a check. Urbane checked there, and Gallon Ruckus is now the leader. Posted coming with her run on the outside, and Urbane comes on through as Forrest starts the back pedal. They're midway around the far turn. Gal and Ruckus is the leader. Sneaky quiet, last on the back stretch, ranging up into contention on the outside, and Urbane is under a drive at the rail. She'll have to work to win this one. They're coming down to the final furlong. Gal and Ruckus. Urbane's in big trouble. Urbane is laboring down on the rail. Sneaky quiet on the far outside is there. Nesta Colors is fourth. They're in the last furlong. Gal and Ruckus, a huge upset looming here. Urbane with one final try running out of ground and down to the line. Gal and Ruckus has won. Herb McCauley aboard. Trainer John T. Ward. Well, could this uh, show us that for an upset tomorrow? He trains Pyramid Peak and Jambalaya Jazz and Urbane 
second best today. She had to check on the far turn, but she had her shot in the stretch, and she did not get the job done today. Well, Tom Durkin called it for you. He spotted that Urbane did not seem very comfortable uh, going to the post. Then she had to check in the race. All kinds of trouble. She got discouraged, but certainly it was not discouraging for a gal in a ruckus. Trained by the Philly trainer, John Ward. He has his training set right behind the Keeneland racetrack, known for his work with Phillies. His owner, Jack Oxley of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Bob Newmeyer has a look at this stunning upset in the Oaks. Well, Chris, I think the key, obviously, here is the trouble that Eddie De La Husse would get in in this race. You see him in the blue cap on the inside. By this time, Gallon Ruckus is going, going, gone with McCauley on the lead through fractions of 23-3, 47-2, 1-12-3. Urbane courageously trying to dig in in the last 16th. Not enough punch. And Gal in a ruckus at 30 to 1. Well, leave it to Durkin and Newmeyer to pick two long shots against Urbane and come up with neither one of them. Gal in a ruckus. $62 and change for those who backed her today. She's a Canadian bred by Bold Ruckus out of a gummo mare. A smile on the face of jockey Herb McCauley. Gal in a ruckus at 30 to 1. Gets to the wire first over the big favorite Urbane. A big surprise like this one in the Oaks. Gal and Ruck is coming to the winner's circle. There's John Ward leading his filly in. Herb McCauley is up. The $90,000 Keeneland purchase just picks up a check of $235,040. Her only race earlier this year, a six and a half furlong allowance victory at Keeneland. Her only race at three before coming here. She has had two races at two over this strip. Uh, neither one of them winning ones, but on the biggest Philly race run at Churchill Downs, Gallon of Ruckus found it was her day. There's the winner's circle, Jack Oxley and the Tulsa gang in there, and let's go to Bob Newmeyer to take another look at this. Disappointing for jockey Eddie De La Husse, the rider of Urbane. Tom Durkin observed in the pre-race warm-up, she seemed a little nervous to him. Was that the case? Well, with the big crowd and everything, she got a little more upset than usual. And uh, But what made it even worse, and near the 3-8 pole, I got banged pretty good. And it knocked her old back end out from under. And she still tried to regain herself and come on, but the other filly was gone. See if we can sneak a peek at this particular incident. Uh, I believe Forrested was on the inside. Gallon of Ruckus, there you are, number four. Did you have a little hole you were trying to sneak well, through? Well, I was in there. I was already in there. But then uh, Dick, uh, Jerry Bailey's horse came out and knocked her back in right out from under. Like her back legs caught my filly's back leg. And it was just a bad situation. Did you feel that stumble cost you the race, all things being equal, Eddie? Well, let's put it to you this way. It didn't help the situation. I don't know if I'd have beat the Philly anyway, but I wish it wouldn't have happened. So the winner, you had no option to claim foul because it was Forrested who might have caused the trouble and not the eventual winner. Correct. Correct. Bad racing luck for Eddie De La Husse here in the Kentucky Oaks. Chris? How many times have we heard it? There is no such thing as a sure thing. Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, Paul Hatt, going to make the presentations to uh, John Oxley and family here as uh, Herb McCauley and trainer John Ward in the winner's circle of the Kentucky Oaks. And now Tom Durkin takes a rather unusual view at this running of the Oaks. A blimp's eye view. There you see Forrested in the red cap on the inside. She is going to tire. Right next to her, the horse in the blue colors is Urbane. The eventual winners on the outside and in front, Gal the Ruckus. When horses get tired, they tend to back up. Now there the trouble begins. Actually, it appeared to me that Urbane may have come over just a little bit uh, on uh, Forrested. Anyway, there was contact there, and uh, Urbane had to check and check hard as the uh, field went around the far turn. Now, when they're coming uh, down the stretch, let's uh, give credit where credit is due to Gal in a ruckus. This was her second start this year off a six and a half for long race. That was the exact same thing that Sardula did last year when she won this race. I thought that uh, Urbane really had every chance to win. One year, one to five, and a length and a half behind at the top of the stretch. Even with that trouble on the turn, I thought that Urbane uh, could have been the winner today. She got bait. Let's go to Chris. There goes Gal and a ruckus back. Uh, 30 to 1. The crowd has roared. The prices are up. We'll come back and show those to you. There's the winner's circle of the Kentucky Oaks and a happy group here.
the official prices and look at that gal at a ruckus seventy dollars twelve twenty and four urbane the favorite two forty two ten sneaky quiet two sixty that exact is one eighty seven twenty and the Wittenauer winning time is one minute and fifty seconds well off of the stakes and track record in the one forty eight range here's the full order now following the top three nascar colors four scratch paper was five post-it was six that was bob newmeyer's pick right forested Oh, I'm sorry, that was Tom Durkin's pick was six. And Forrested, that was Bob Newmeyer's pick. Huh, that was seventh. Cat Appeal was last. Bob? We're here with the winning connections of the winner of the Kentucky Oaks. And uh, John Ward, you have an entry in tomorrow's Kentucky Derby. And this was a pleasant surprise. Are you shocked at this pari mutual price that you lit up the board with today at Churchill Downs? Honestly. Well, uh, no, I'm not shocked with the Perry Mutual Prize. I don't bet, but I'm, I'm glad to see somebody made a, a big score on it. But this is a super nice filly. My wife does the work on this filly. Herbie McCauley rides this filly wonderfully, and this is the Pyramid Peak combination of tomorrow. My Herbie McCauley and my wife doing the conditioning. What a parley this would be, Herb. But what about the race? Uh, a big incident at the 3 8 pole involving Urbane, who I guess tried to sneak in a little bit of hole. Were you aware of that on the lead with your filly? Well, I was a little bit surprised to be on the lead. It wasn't my real tactics of the race but the filly broke out there strong and I was able to slow it down she was able to settle she took a took good handle of the racetrack and what happened was you know I was controlling the pace and uh, if he was trying to force into a spot I wasn't going to let him in there I just wanted to make sure that I didn't use my filly earlier than I intended to all right so the very happy connections of the winner here of the Kentucky Oaks Chris back to you Gallant Ruckus has really stunned him here at Churchill Downs. And I remember Brian Mayberry earlier this week said, no matter what they say, you still got to take him over there, let him run around. Strange things can happen in horse racing. The problems are being had as she warmed up, wanted to get into the race, and then really a strange race. What the split times tell you about it? Well, a controlling uh, pace by uh, Gal and Ruckus. Uh, the half mile went in uh, 47 and two fifth seconds and uh, got the mile in 37 and two. Came the last uh, furlong in 12 and three fifth seconds. The final time was good, if not spectacular, and that last eighth was good, if not spectacular. The went now split time, selling part of the story. Certainly that incident at the three eighths pole as well. And a big upset for Gal in a ruckus, and we shall have more to congratulate as we go down to the winner's circle, John Oxley with Bob Newmeyer. Debbie and John Oxley, the happy owners. Beautiful flowers for a, a lovely lady. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Is it surprised? Really yes. Yes, very surprised. I was mentioning to your husband, he probably thought he had a better chance in the Derby tomorrow with his entry of Pyramid Peak and Jambalaya Jazz than maybe even thought you had today. Well, we've been planning on the Derby now since January, and it's been a big buildup for a lot of excitement tomorrow, we hope. But today was uh, just a real good uh, beginning for this weekend. We couldn't ask for anything nicer. And John, imagine this parlay winning the derby tomorrow in the yokes today with long shot blockbusters wouldn't that be something well you know we were number three today and uh, tomorrow uh, pyramid peaks number three as well and uh, my jockey's uh, uh, favorite and lucky number is three so maybe it's an omen enjoy thank you that's the story from the winner's circle back to chris one of our Tulsa boys, Jack Oxley, his dad, John, I'm sure is enjoying that as well. I think you'll enjoy now looking ahead to the Kentucky Derby tomorrow by looking back a bit. The Caesars Palace Future Book Odds for the Kentucky Derby. This will make you sick when you see what kind of prices you could have had, Tom, on some of our Derby favorites tomorrow. Now, currently the morning line on Afternoon Delights, for instance, is 9-2. to two. You could have had him at 60-1 to one at one point. The Philly Serena's song at 5-2. to two. She could have been 65 at one price there. The other part of that favorite entry tomorrow, Timber Country, was at 20 to 1 at one point. Talking Man at 40 is now 7 to 2, second choice for the Derby. And El Tish, the English invader, is 12 to 1. Could have been 40 to 1. Tom, some of your thoughts on the Kentucky Derby. Well, going back to 1971, the first time I sat in the grandstands of the Derby, I saw a horse called Cananaro II from Venezuela around everybody. What about a horse from, from South America? Well, we've got them all over from Asia and Europe tomorrow. I, I'm really intrigued by the horse from Japan, Ski Captain. And, of course, the post position draw really drew some awes. Uh, Timber Country uh, drew 16. He probably, of all the contenders, drew the worst of them all in that auxiliary gate. Well, some of the crowd filing out here at Churchill Downs this afternoon. You can bet they'll be back tomorrow, and they'll probably double the numbers. 87,000 plus here this afternoon. Oaks Day record. Kentucky Derby special. You don't have to fight the crowd. Join us live 12 to 2 on ESPN, 2 to 4.30 on ESPN2. Then we wrap the day up on ESPN2 Sports Night. Join us live at 6 o'clock Eastern.
for the results and the analysis and all the interviews of the 121st Kentucky Derby. But on this day, Oaks Day, in the Phillies racing for lilies this afternoon, it was Gal in a ruckus in a major upset paying $70 to win the Kentucky Oaks.